Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Structure and Function, Level 3 Material Properties. After watching this video, you should be able to identify material and the importance of material properties in objects like this soft-sided cooler or in non-recyclable plastic. I'm going to show you my thinking around material properties in this nice pair of scissors and then you'll have a chance to think with me as we think through this pepper grinder. As always, the first thing you want to do before you get to material properties is to identify the system. What system are you going to be investigating? But you can see the whole box is filled with material. There are actually two types of material. There is the material structure. In other words, what material are these different structures made up of? And then there's going to be material function. So why did they choose those specific material? And what function did they play in the overall design of the product? Remember, the object that represents structure and function are these two wooden blocks because they show how structure depends on function and function is determined by the structure. Um, but you always want to look at something new now with this lens of materials after watching this video. W what is this made up of? What is the wood made up of? The paint? The magnet? What kind of material is it made up of? And how does that lend itself to the overall uh, function of the structure itself. So I'm going to get the scissors out and we're going to take a look at that. As always, the first thing you want to do is identify the system that you're going to be investigating. So we're going to investigate this pair of scissors right here. Uh, the next thing you want to do is start thinking about what is this made up of? What is the material that makes up the scissors? So I see really three types of material. Let me list these out under material structure. So the three materials that I see in this scissors is going to be the metal. The metal makes this cutting part. It also makes this um, little screw that holds the two parts together. And probably the metal goes up into the where the handle is. We also have the rubber. The rubber is on the inside and I can feel it's real soft on the inside. So soft on the hands. And then we have the plastic which is going to be a little bit harder on the outside. So what is material? Material at the simplest is simply the matter that makes up a thing. So this is made up of the matter of metal, rubber, and plastic. The next thing we want to do is identify what are the properties. And so let me get some properties that correspond with these materials. So if we think about some of the properties for these materials, metal is very hard and it's rigid. It's uh, the opposite of rigid would be flexible, which we would find in rubber, which is soft and flexible. And then plastic is hard and it's light. And so what is a material? Material is simply what something is made up of. And what is a property? It's any trait that we could measure about that material. And so I'm just listing some of the properties. There's more properties that we could list for these different materials. But the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about shape. Okay, so as I line this out, everything we're talking about so far is just material structure. What are some of the properties and then what are the shapes of those materials? Or rather, what are the materials? What are the properties and shapes? So I said for metal that metal can be sharp in other words, you can sharpen the end of the scissors and it also is really, really thin, makes it good for cutting. Um, I said the rubber is soft and it can be contoured so that it fits your hand. And then finally, the plastic can be light. It also can be hard so it can connect to the metal itself. And so when you're thinking about material structure, not only what are the properties of it, but how can the engineers or how can the manufacturers make it fit the actual function. So now that I've thought through all of the materials that they've chosen, the next thing I'll do is I'll think about how it could be used. So 
So you can see that the function of metal in my design is it, I can make a sharp blade. Um, the function of the rubber is that it's soft on my hand and then the function of the plastic or the use of the plastic is to make it light. And so now when you're looking at an overall structure, not only should you think of the structures within the structures or the complex structures, we should always be thinking about what materials did they use to create this and why did they use those materials? Likewise, as you start to make designs of your own, you should always be thinking about what do I want and what materials might lend themselves to that specific purpose. So what I'm going to do is take a second to clear this off and then I'm going to give you a chance to show your thinking using a different structure. Okay, now that I've shown you my thinking around material structure and function uh, using the scissors, we're going to do the same thing with this pepper grinder. So let me define the system. I should also show you how a pepper grinder works. So you can have these uh, peppercorns in here. Uh, at the top there's a lid. I can pull that off. You can see on the inside there's a screw, but there's a blade inside here. So when I turn it upside down and twist it, so what I'm getting, you can see, is I'm getting some pepper coming out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have you do some thinking around material structure and material function. Um, the three different materials that I see here, let me list those out for you. Okay, so the materials that I see are glass, that makes up the container, the plastic, which links the metal um, to the metal in the inside that actually does a lot of the cutting. And so what I'd like to have you do is use either the system thinking slides down below, or you could use a piece of paper, um, but try to list out what are some properties what are some shapes that can be achieved by these materials? And then what's the use of these materials that were chosen for this design? So again, pause the video, do some thinking, and then come back and we'll see how our thinking matches up. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is after I've identified the material is I want to list out the different properties from these materials. So let me do that. Alrighty, so important properties, I think the glass being transparent is an important property and also being hard. Um, the plastic being hard and light and maybe even cheap and the metal being hard and rigid are important properties. Next thing I would think about is how can they be shaped or how can they be manufactured? Alrighty, so as far as shapes, the fact that this glass can be molded into a container is important. There's so many plastic pieces as a part of this pepper grinder, the screw, the container here at the top. And so you can make it into various shapes. I'm sure those can be light and also cheap. And then the metal can be sharpened into a blade. Um, also, we have metal on the outside. So the next thing I would do is say, okay, so these are the material structures here. What are the uses of those? Alright, so some particular material functions that I have, uh, the use of the glass is to hold the pepper. The fact that it's transparent is nice, so I can see the pepper carns on the inside, it gives it a real nice design. If we think about all of the plastic, it makes all these light connecting parts of the pepper grinder. And then if we think about why did they choose metal, well that's to actually do the grinding. So to grind the pepper, you need a hard rigid material that can be sharpened into a blade. And so you can see as I dig into more of the material properties and shapes, it tells me not only what were they thinking when they were designing the material, but how might you make a similar design using similar materials. So I've shown you my thinking for the pepper grinder. What I'd love to have you do is do the same thing. Use something that's a little bit more flexible. I've got some thinking slides. You could do this uh, soft-sided cooler or even these non-recyclable plastics and see what kind of properties do they have. So that is structure and function. It's really about material, which is just 
how is something made, what's it made up of, and then the properties, measurable, measurable traits, and those traits eventually lead to a use, which is overall tied to the specific material function. So again, uh, that's material, that's properties, and I hope that's helpful.